Now it's time for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Come on and give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to be home. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's good to be home. Yeah. Praise God. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Asking, where's your home church? 4501. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Where's the fifth place? Amen. I'm still, Amen. I was at a funeral yesterday and when I got up, I didn't have to hem haul around. The CD and I'm emerged like a minister. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I still count this my foundation, yeah. my home, my covering. Yeah. Amen. 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 I still pay my tithes here. I'm saying that for y'all's benefit. Amen. Yeah. And for the devil's benefit. So yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I pay my tithes here. I hear Amen. a big amen coming from my dad. Maybe she sees me when it comes in. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I thank God. Yeah. For a foundation. If I say foundation. foundation. We're in a rough time right now. Yeah. In the in the church world. The church is a mess. Mm -hmm. yes. But that don't mean that we have to be a mess with it. Right. Amen. 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 We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're in this church world, but we don't have to be conforming to the church world in its present condition. We should be a light and a difference. Somebody say amen. 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 Before I get into the word, I want to honor my wife and thank God for her. Yeah. You want to come and meet the people? Amen. Thank God for Pastor Dolly. Amen. The Lord Terry has watched for 25 years that we've been married. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here at Kisa. It's good to be home. And I'm just, I'm thankful for, and I, I probably say this every time. I get up here, but I'm, I'm so thankful for the presence of God in yeah. this place. Yeah. Amen. We can't take it lightly. You know, every church doesn't let God have his Come way. You know, I believe in having a program. I believe in, in having order. Right. But God should be able to say, yeah. move this around. Amen. Move this. And some people will not. They won't allow God to have space to do what he wants to do. So I, I'm just thankful for this environment. Thankful that it's here. It's a, it's it's healing. It's a blessing. It's a safe place yeah. for people who are looking for a place that they can connect with the Spirit of God yeah. for real. For real. Yeah. For real. Amen. For real. Yeah. And we just need to not take that for granted. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Love you all. Love you. Love you. Praise God. Well, thank God for everyone that's here, everyone, all the praises that have gone out already. And if you have your Bibles, I would like you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. As I was preparing to minister this morning, this message the Lord gave me, he gave it to me a few days ago, and I, just, I was like, okay, Lord. And I was reading it this morning, and I was like, wow, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Amen. You know, I want to be able to be one of them. No, no, I don't want to be one of them. I want to be able to get up and preach and make people shout. And, you know, but sometimes we got to learn how to shout over the truth and shout over the word and shout over when it's cutting us, yeah. when it's getting us, and when it's setting us up and when it's changing us around. Yeah. Not just when it's telling us we're getting ready to confess our way into a new car and a new house and yeah. new this, new husband, new wife. <clears throat> but when it's hitting us, and making us, putting us in remembrance. If I say remembrance, Remember. we've got to keep ourselves in remembrance of the word yes. in this hour that we're living in. Yes. Brother Rod, in, in, in Timothy, the fourth chapter said, in the last days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits uh -huh. and doctrines of devils, yes. teachings of devils. That's going on right now. Right now. Been going on, and it's really getting right. bad now. Amen. We've got so much grace being preached. Grace, 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 grace. And I know we're under grace. I agree we're under grace. But we've got to understand what grace is for. Yes, we do. Amen. Come on. Paul wrote in one place, he said, do we, what, what say we now we're under grace and keep sinning? God forbid. Do we use grace as a license of sin? No. And I was getting ready for work and for church this morning, and I heard the Holy Spirit. I went out and told my wife about it. I said, look, I just heard the Lord say, we need to remind the church that Ananias and Sapphira fell dead in the church yeah. under grace. Yeah. Come on, that wasn't Old Testament. Jesus had already died and ascended when Ananias and Sapphira fell dead in the church. 
So it's not too much and it's not too out of the order, out of the question for God to deal with people. Why do you think we're burying people so quick? Amen. So my mother died in November, and since her funeral, I have been in a funeral almost every two weeks consistently, speaking, singing, attending funeral after funeral, and ridiculous ages, young people, not, you know, not, not elderly folks, a couple of them, but most of them were young, just out. Some of the testimonies that some of the services was, they got saved right before they died. Oh, God is serious about us making heaven our home. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're living in a time right now where we're being taught some weak stuff. Yes. We're not being given some real strong spiritual food. We're not being given strong spiritual medicine to deal with the sickness in our soul. Amen. We're, begin, we're, 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 we're being given watered down medicine. Watered down word. It don't really mean that. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pray. You don't have to do this. You don't have to abstain from things. You don't have to live like that. That's what's being taught today. So can we read the Bible? I said, can we read the Bible? First Corinthians, the sixth chapter and the sixth verse says, Your glorifying is not good. Know ye not that a little, little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sanctified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We have got to get the old junk out. And allow the Holy Spirit to purge out what he wants to purge out of us yes. so that he can create in us yes. a clean heart, yes. renewing in us a right spirit yes. so that we can be the example to the believer. Amen. But I'm not an example to the believer when I'm living the way I used to be living and doing what I used to be doing. Just because I shout on Sunday does not mean I'm an example to the believer. Amen. But I am an example to the sinner. Jesus told some folks, he said, you are of your father, the devil. Jesus said that. We act like Jesus didn't rebuke, chastise, reprove. Didn't he do it? So we've got to allow him, when he shows us something, immediate reaction, when the Lord will show me something about myself, my immediate reaction is to try to figure out how that's not true. Well, that's not the case. Oh, it's not like that. But when I start, listen, what is that our flesh? Don't our flesh want to live? Amen. Don't our flesh want to be alive? Amen. But Paul said, I die daily. daily. I have to crucify my flesh daily. I have to come against myself daily. I've got to not do what, listen, Paul said, I, when I would do good, evil is ever present. So if Paul was dealing with that, how much more are we? Amen. If Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, was wanting to do good, but evil was ever present, and when I would do something, right, and uh, I find myself doing that that I don't want to do. If Paul was dealing with that, how much more we? It's not time for us to stop fasting and praying. It's not time for us to shut down the church or close the doors. It's time for us to, Mother used to talk about having church like quick trip on every corner. Having church 24 hours a day. I remember the first time she said that to the mic, I remember her saying that. She said, we need to have church around here like quick trip 24 hours a day. And I was sitting on the organ thinking, who's going to play for all that church? <laughs> and she looked over at me like she heard my thoughts. She said, you ain't going to have to play for all of it. God got musicians beside you. <laughs> Come on. Amen. God, we, he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and even more so. As you see the day approaching, we shouldn't be looking for ways out of going and gathering God's people together or gathering together as his people as much as we can safely right now. But we should be looking for ways to get in to more presence of the Lord. But we, the Bible says that there come a time when people become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Well, I didn't go tonight. It's family time. Why do you have to have family time during church time? We stayed home and watched another Avenger movie. Does that help you spiritually? I'm not saying you're going to hell if you watch an Avenger movie, but we don't need to let things become idols to us. Amen. You might as well say amen. It's the truth. Amen. Missing church to, to do things of the world that are 
build up our carnal mind, missing the presence of God. Mother used to tell us that the condition some of y'all are in, y'all to be under the pew waiting for the next service and keeping up. Come on, amen. amen. But we can't live with a little bit of sin. We've got to get let the Holy Spirit purge out everything. Amen. David said, I'll put no evil thing before my eyes. What are we listening to? What are we watching on television? What are we looking at in the privacy of our own room, on our tablet or our computer? What are we pulling up? If God flashed up some of our search histories on the wall right now, would we be shamed? But I could just do this. One lady told the pastor once, she said, I, I just fornicate now and again. Now and then. I read in the Bible where he said, don't let it once be named among you as become the saints. Let's keep going. He said, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. When you're sincere about something mm -hmm. and you're walking in truth, amen? Yes. Jump down to the ninth verse. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We're just reading the Bible right now. Yeah. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor re revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That right there is in the New Testament. That's in the New Testament right there. That right there is saying that if you're practicing in that thing, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, now, if you've been delivered from that or you stop doing those things and you're not living that lifestyle, then you don't need And that's where we get over in the week. <clears throat> I know there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's a difference. Yeah. Conviction is the Holy Spirit saying, stop that. Yeah. Condemnation is the enemy saying, look what you used to do. Yeah. You bad thing. Yeah. God can't use you because what you used to do. That's, that's condemnation. We're not talking about, I'm not talking about ignore conviction. Amen. Conviction comes, not, listen, we, we harp on certain sins, but conviction comes over a lot of stuff. Yes. Conviction comes, you can be talking and, and, and the Holy Spirit says, shh, stop, 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 stop. And it's just flowing out your mouth, just gossip, just talking about somebody, running somebody down, doubt and unbelief, and the Holy Spirit says, stop it. Stop talking. But you feel good in that moment. You know what else? <laughs> but when that conviction comes, we have to say, yes, God, help me. Yeah. And acknowledge that conviction. Yeah. He listed all these things. He said, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But keep reading. He said, and such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. Oh, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. You used to be those things, but you've been washed, oh, yes. sanctified, Thank you. cleaned up, yes. set apart, yes. justified. Yes. Come on, that's what the blood of Jesus did for us. Yes. We've been washed up. You may bring it, you may know what I did last summer, but if it's under the blood, it don't matter no more. Amen. It becomes not just a shame, but it becomes a testimony yes. of what the Lord delivered me out of. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 So somebody brings up your past, your response should be, well, you just the devil. You're talking about it. no. Your response is, yeah, that's right, I was doing that, but thank God I'm delivered now, and I can tell somebody else about the truth. Yes. Don't let them drag you down. Rejoice in that. You're right. Come on, we got people in the church that feel like it's their, their, minute, their ministry, their anointing, their calling to make sure that every new person that comes in knows about everybody's past. I had a young teenager in my youth group when I was a youth pastor here. He comes to me, Brother C, is it true that you so and so and so? And I said, Where did you hear that? That was before you were born. He pointed at one of the mothers in the church and he said, She told me that. I should have known. That mother, she's not here. Now, and she had a reputation for just being newspaper with everybody's past. Yeah. Barbara Walters of the, <laughs> come on, reporting on all the unjust things that anybody ever done. 
So I had to deal with him. I didn't say, well, no. And I didn't get mad at him. I said, yeah, that's true. I did that. That was 20-some years ago, but it's under the blood. Yeah. Amen. It's under the blood. So I am washed. Yeah. Amen. Now, if you're still doing these things, they, 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 come on. If you're still doing these things, and somebody says they're a fornicator, I'm using that as an example, then you don't need to get mad. See, brother, see, he wore a blue jacket to church. What is the truth? I wore a blue jacket to church. Somebody's telling the truth on you. You wish they wouldn't talk about what you messed up in. You wish they wouldn't sh sh spread it around, but they do. So when you get delivered from it, just own it. Yeah, I did that, but I'm not that no more. Amen. I'm not that no more. I'm washed. Amen. But if you're doing it, stop it. Stop it. If I say stop it. But I can't, brother. See, I try it. Don't give up. Bye. <laughs> you, keep, you keep trying restaurants till you find the kind of chicken you like. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, have you ever been down to church? You know, church is kind of greedy. You like Popeyes? Popeyes is good, but they're hot. What about K KFC? Hasn't been good for 15 years. upset when the, I don't know if I can go over there in that church they're just kind of strict I'm not talking about dragging people into legalism and tradition and all of that but we don't need to get away from the word Amen. I'm going to say that again we don't need to get away from the word Amen. and we need to stop trying to explain away the word Got to look up the word in the Hebrew and the Greek and try to see what, finding an angle. Why are you looking for a loophole to see? Mm. Come on. Well, I can do this because, well, I can do that. Well, see, I, I got this situation. Everybody got a situation. But God is able to bring anybody and everybody out of anything. If we let him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And such were some of you, and we'll read it again, but ye are washed. I say, I'm washed. I'm, washed. I'm, sanctified. I'm sanctified. And I'm justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Not to keep doing it. <laughs> not to keep doing it. I'm, I'm washed. I'm delivered. I'm sanctified. But I'm going to keep doing it now. That's not what he's talking about. Stop it. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. And all things are lawful for me, but I would I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. Up down to the 15th verse. Ooh, wow. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? This 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 scripture right here. Young people listen. Old people listen. Yeah. When you really understand that your body is a member of Christ, when you've given your life to Christ and you now belong to Jesus, that you what when you sit in your body. You are doing it with, with something that is connected to Christ. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that you that we, that, that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined in the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Run from it. Get out of the way. Don't You don't have to answer a phone call that comes on your phone. Some of them people, when you find out what they're about, you need to say them in your phone as do not answer. Send risk. You know about spam risk. We, we download apps to keep from getting us the spam alert. You should say some of those numbers. Send alert. Send detected. Dirty dog detected. Come on, how are you going to put it? Somebody sneaky, detected. <laughs> Amen. This is serious. Flee. Run from it. Don't give any of the Bible says not to give occasion to the fulfill, fulfill the lust of the devil, to fulfill the lust of our flesh. Don't give any place to the devil. Hallelujah. 
Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. See, we don't preach about this stuff enough. I'm talking as a whole. I know House of Prayer gets it all the time, but I'm talking about you know church world. We, we act like this stuff isn't here. We want to. We want. We we're in that time where Jesus said they would heed to them. The word. Uh, he he to themselves, teachers said, teach us smooth things. Yes, yes. Having itching ears, they want to hear something, but they don't really want to hear anything that's going to mess with their daily life. Amen. So why are you preaching this to us, Pastor C? God knows who's in here. Yeah. And God knows who might be dealing with this, and God knows who might be being getting ready to be tempted with this. And when you've been delivered out of something, and I'm not just talking about fornication, I'm talking about sin, anything that you've ever had a a weakness in the enemy will try to bring that back. The enemy will try to bring it back around and have you fall in the same trap again. The Bible says that when a spirit is cast out, it goes to the dry places, and then it says to itself sometime later, it says, let me go back and check out my house. And it comes back and checks us out. And it says it finds the temple clean but empty, it comes back in with seven more worse than you. Under grace. Amen. Who wants to be seven times worse than you were when God delivered you? Amen. But when the Spirit comes back and it finds you and praying and fasting and keeping your spirit man built up, it just got to go back to the dry places. Yeah. Yeah. Temptation comes, but we don't have to give in to it. Come down to the 19th verse. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Hallelujah. Say that out of you. I say, I am not my own. Amen. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. Amen. I've been bought. <laughs> Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Amen. We're supposed to glorify God in what? Our body? Yeah. I don't know if it's still out there, Brother Rodney. You can tell me if it isn't. But there used to be a video on uh, YouTube on Brother Rodney's channel. It was Mother Tucker Aww. preaching. It was give your body to God. Uh, give your body to God. It's still out there. It's still out there. Look for it. Give your body to God. You gave it to the devil long enough. Now yeah. give your yeah. body to God. Yeah. We give our soul to the Lord. Now we need to give our body to God. Yeah. How we're living. Don't, don't, don't let anything come and contaminate us, but guard our bodies. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Give our bodies to God. Lord, my body, he said right here, glorify God in your body. That's how you live, what you do in your body, yes. what you say in your body, how you conduct yourself in your body. It should be bringing glory to God. Yes. So when people look at you, when people look at me, they see a man, a woman of God. They see somebody who's living for Jesus. They see somebody who's living right. They see somebody who's walking after the word, who's confessing the word, who's shunning sin and trying to make heaven their home. When they look at us, give our body to God. Amen. 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 Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Yes. Which are God's. Flip over to Galatians and I'm going to be done. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Third, I'm sorry. Yes, the fifth chapter, the 13th verses. For brethren... Ye have been called unto liberty. For an occasion, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this that ye shall love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye not be consumed one of another. 16th verses. This I say unto say then, when in the spirit, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. See, here's the thing. We're saying up here, don't do this, don't do that. You hear preachers get up on the don't stop doing something. But it isn't that we have to do it under our own power. 
we, we do as much as we can to not sin, but the Holy Spirit will come. Jesus will come and make up the difference. Yes. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Yes. And when, we, when we've done all we can do, that's when he steps in and does the rest. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. To walk in the Spirit. We've got to walk in the Spirit. Because yes. when you walk yes. in the Spirit... And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you're more in tune with your spirit, well, not your spirit, when the spirit, when you're more in tune with the spirit of God, yes. then when temptation comes, it's not hard for the Holy Ghost to say to you, uh uh. Yes. And when you're more in tune with the spirit of God, more than you are in your flesh, then you can get your flesh under control. That's why he, we need to fast and pray to crucify our flesh so that when we are faced with temptation, yes. Yes. when we are faced with temptation, yes. we have strength to say no. Yes. We have yes. strength to say not today. Yes. No, sir. Thank no, ma'am. Not today, devil. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. For the flesh lusteth after or against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. See, that's the thing. Remember, we're not under the law. If you're being led by the Spirit, because the Spirit is not going to lead us to sin. The Spirit is not going to lead us into dark places. The Spirit is not going to lead us back into things that he's brought us out of. Somebody say amen. amen. But if you're walking after the Spirit, what does it say in Romans 8 and 1? It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Yes. Yes, Lord. When you're walking after the Spirit, there's no condemnation. Amen. When you're walking after the Spirit of God, when you're walking after the Word, well, I don't know what the Lord wants me to do. That's why we have to read the Word. Yes. By the renewing of our mind, and we renew the, our mind by the word. We need to be reminded of what the word of God says. Not just on Sundays, but on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturday. Yes. Sunday again, Monday. Yes. To every day, we need to put ourselves in remembrance and let the Holy Ghost put us in remembrance yes. of what the word of God says. Yes. So that we can go out and we can live, or what they say often, live a different life. Live a transformed life. Live a renewed yes. life. So we can live a, be a light in this sin-cursed world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We don't do that under our own strength. We give everything to the Lord and we say, here it is, Lord, I'm weak. I'm short in this area. I've fallen short. I need your help. And God, here's where I'm struggling. Yes. And be honest with God. Yes. Yes. So we mess up when we're not honest with God. Yes. Get honest with, with what's going on in us. With, Lord, with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Be honest. Don't. Mother used to say, some of y'all are afraid to confess something. Well, I'm afraid to let the Lord know. He already knows. You're not letting him in on nothing. Amen. Yeah. Lord, you know, I'm, I don't want to shock you. He already knows what we're dealing with. Yeah. And he still loves us. Yeah. And he still wants to give us the strength and the peace and the forgiveness and the mercy and the grace not to stay there and keep uh, worrying about what we did, but to come away from it a different person, a yeah. different lifestyle, yeah. a different with more strength. With more power. Well, come on, I want the word to dwell in you. He said, let the word dwell in you richly. Yes. Let this word be in you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to let the Lord put us in remembrance of the word of God. Well, I don't know what to read. You know, if you're just starting out to read the Bible, don't start in Genesis. Somebody at work the other day said, you know, I really feel like I need to start reading my Bible. I just, I keep getting stuck in Lamentations. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not some place you want to dwell right now. That's not where you need to get over in, the, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and learn about Jesus. How did he get here? What did he come to do? How did he live his life? What did he teach? Yes. And then go on and see, after you really get an understanding of who Jesus is and what he said, then go on through the churches that he wrote to, that, that he had the apostles write letters to and find out how we're supposed to live. Yes. How we're supposed to forgive. How we're supposed to walk in love and forbear. I said, you get out of Lamentations right now. That, that, that'll be up for another time. Come on, church. Amen. So I encourage you to read the word of God. Read it. But don't get, 
and listen, if you're just really getting an understanding of the Lord, don't go hang out in Revelation. You're going to scare yourself. Amen. Amen. I've had people, I tried to read the Bible. And I got in Revelation. I got so scared. I ain't read it since. Well, you shouldn't have started there. You don't understand. Amen. That's a book you need to read. You need to read with, some, with somebody that knows something. Commentaries and studies references. You don't need to just go in there reading all that stuff and the beast is coming forth and all Oh, God. No. You need some understanding that most of that stuff in there is going to happen after we're not here anymore. Come on, church. Amen. So get in and find out who Jesus is. Find out who Jesus is. What did he teach? What did he live? How did he live? Who did he go after? Amen? Amen. We want to, how many, how many want to make heaven home? I want to make heaven home. Amen. I want to make heaven my home. I want to get there. I don't want to get there and find out that he didn't know me. I don't want him to say, I don't want to be the one, one of those ones that say, didn't I preach at the house of prayer a million times and didn't I cast out devils in your name and, and didn't I play for a thousand revivals and, and, and you got time to read the word of God. When you're not talking so much and hanging out and doing all these things, you can really get into some prayer. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That was one of the hardest seven days of my life. And I'm talking. Because I had to take her some places. And that was one of my joys was riding around with her and, and taking her places and going to different things. And, and we talk and she we discuss the word and she's over there quiet and I'm over in the driver's seat quiet and nobody was saying nothing. 
have of us. But I thank God today that we went through it. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Fasting is important. Everybody say fasting. Fasting, fasting is so important. This, Jesus says some of these things will not come out except by prayer Amen. and fasting. Amen. I, 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 I just believe that I'm going to get the victory over this as we fast for the body. But no, I, I got that uh, series from that one preacher who said, you know, we don't have to fast anymore. And he explained how what those scriptures mean about fasting. It didn't mean not to eat. It meant to, to you know, some strange revelation. But we need to fast. I said we need to fast. Amen. Amen. Fasting is good for us. It's good. It crucifies our flesh. And come on, we need to fast. And we need to really be praying about what it is and when God wants us to fast and how he wants us to fast. And we don't know. We, we may be fasting for us, and there's times that he may have us fasting to crucify us so that we, we are going to encounter somebody that's really going to need something. Yes. And we need to have the power to deal with whatever demon is yes. in you. Yes, Lord. Yes. I've walked up to people before, and demons start manifesting, and I get ready to pray for them, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, back up, you're not ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You read about them in the Bible, though. Cast out a thing, they got beat up. Yeah. <laughs> it happened a couple of times that I went to deal with something. The Holy Spirit said, No, you're not ready. You need to do a little more fasting before you deal with that spirit. Oh. Yeah. And I didn't get mad, and I didn't get shamed. I just, All right, Lord, start fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is real, the yeah. Word of God is true. Yeah. And what He said, what was real back then, is still real today. Yeah. If we get out of our flesh and get out of ourselves and get out of our wants and our carnal minds. See, the carnal mind, the Bible says, is not subject to the law of God and neither indeed can be. So we don't need to start trying, keep trying to do stuff in the spirit with our carnal mind because we can't do anything with our carnal mind. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it says enmity is, 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 what is it? Our carnal mind is enmity. It's serious. We, we, we can't expect to glorify God with our carnal mind. Amen. Amen. Because we will counsel ourselves right out of the will of God. Yes. Sometimes the Lord will speak to you. You give somebody something. It could be $20. And we'll start counseling ourselves. Do they really need that $20? What are they going to do with that $20? Well, I need to know what they're going to do with it. They might not all be straight in my hand. Well, we just go to counsel because we want to hold on to our $20. Because I want to go to Quick Trip. <laughs> but the Lord is speaking to you. It's not my job to try to judge you whether or not you're worthy of what God told me to bless you with. Amen. If God has spoken to you to be a blessing to somebody, it's going to be a blessing. If they do something wrong with that blessing, that, that's between them and God, and God will deal with them. You just gave yourself into another blessing. Amen. 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 It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can. Right at the beginning of that scripture, that was it's enmity. It's enmity. There's, there, it's in it. Man, good. Mm -hmm. Our mind is not where it's at. Right. And I'm not talking about, you know, you dumb and all that stuff. I'm talking about <coughs> our fleshly, carnal, sin nature. I'm that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not subject to the law of God. And neither indeed can we can't make it work. We can't make our carnal mind fit. But we can renew our mind. Yes. 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 He said, be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. When the Lord gave me these scriptures, and I was like, Lord, these are some heavy scriptures. But, you know, he said, we got to put us, the church, in remembrance of truth. We got to put ourselves in remembrance of living right. We got to go back to what did Jesus say? What does the Word of God say? We can't get away from the Word. No. Oh, we could get away from the Word. I had a man sit across the table from me one time. He was running a revival at the at, here in the church, not this building, but he was running a revival, and he got it in his mind that he really wanted to to take over the ministry, and he wanted to make a mega church out of it, and he could do it. So he took me to dinner because he had it in his mind that if he could get me on his side, that we could overtake. He didn't know. He had the wrong one. Yeah. Took me to dinner. Big fancy restaurant. Uh -oh. Expensive food. Started telling me, now brother, see, we got to get away from all this preaching holiness. Because that's running people off in the church. Uh -oh. I'm listening to him. He said, 
What we need to do is bring in some comedians, some Christian comedians, and have them, you know, people be attracted to that. They'll just get them to laugh and give, give them some joy. We could really make something out of Love Tuck Ministries in this church. I thanked him for his time. I thanked him for that expensive meal. I ordered extra food because he made me mad. <laughs> I left out that restaurant, Jordan and I drove from Utica Square over to 585 West Fairview, we went upstairs, went in the room, I said, you know what he said? Yeah. He want to take over the church. Yeah. Want us to quit preaching holiness, mother. She said, well, if that's his revelation, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, bye. Yeah. Make him money, perish with you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He thought we were going to overtake. But listen, that's how we need to be. Somebody else might have said, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I don't want to be cursed. No, when you're talking about giving people joy, how much joy do we get when we get in the presence of God? Mm -hmm. I have more joy shouting and dancing and praising yeah. God and turning around and Thank seeing you. God's people blessed and casting out devils and you see people. That, that's real joy right there. Yeah. 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 Get somebody up here telling jokes and what they say jokes is the first cousin to lies. Right. And then the Bible said, not joking and jesting, but rather giving thanks. Amen. 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 Not joking and jesting. All this joking you're doing, all right? <laughs> Amen. Oh, Amen. Praise God. We got to be able to remember some truth. Yes, Amen. 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 If you don't shout over the word, that's on you. Because I'm going to go home today and I'm going to find me some good chicken. Lord, I gave them what you told me to give them. They do it. That's something to But just be in remembrance of it. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Put yourself in remembrance of the word. When I say put yourself in remembrance, that means get in it. Read it for yourself. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will bring things to our remembrance too. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. But if I never get in the here and I never get it, and I never get it through my eye gates, never get it through my ear gates, read it out loud, whatever, however I'm getting it and get to let it come out of my mouth, then the Holy Spirit don't have nothing to bring back to my the word is what will keep us. Yes. Yes. Everybody say the word. The word. The word. The word. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ah, Lord, I must say, keep it for shut time. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit keeping us. Thank you. We thank you, Father, that you said in, in, in Judas and now under him was able to keep us from folly and present us blameless. We thank you, Father, that you're able to keep us. Yes. Father, you put us in remembrance of some things today that we don't need to walk around ignorantly sinning and living some type of way and expecting grace to just make up for us. Yes. But Father, you told us to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. Help us, Father, to overcome. Help us to overcome. Help us to say yes to you, God. Help us to say no to sin, but yes to your Holy Spirit. Help us to say no to temptation, but yes to your word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel a spirit of agreement here right now. If you want prayer, I want you to come right now. Come right now. Don't wait. You don't have to take a long time, but come right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I'm not saying can you do this? I agree with Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just lift up your hands before the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just give them the truth. Speak the truth. Pray over them. Pray over them. Pray over them. God's going to use you. You don't have all seen it in the eyes. I keep hearing that. Don't argue with them. When you give them the truth, when you share something with them, and they don't receive it right off, don't get mad at them. Don't get mad. Don't get louder. Don't get louder than they may get mad at you and come back at you. Don't, don't, don't come back with that same energy. I keep hearing the Lord say, don't come back with that same. Uh-uh. He's not. He's not. Yeah. He's drawn by his spirit. Yeah. He's drawn by his spirit. Yeah. God's going to use you. Yeah. God is used. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm going to go around my sick Oh, yeah. Ain't none of those city in my Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for healing her body. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God, every sickness, every infirmity, anything that would try to set itself up in her body, I take authority over it right now. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now. Oh, Jesus. 
I hear the Lord saying he wants to put some order in your life. God has not called you for drama. God has not called you for drama. That's not what God's order is for our life. He wants to put some order in your life. There's some, I don't know what it is, but there's some things you all need to talk about. Y'all need to deal with it and set some things in order. You know what it is. You know what it is. And whatever it is that's keeping you from, well, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Amen. 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 You can't you can't expect God to bless if you don't start making good things in order. And he wants to help you put it in order. Amen. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak peace over their minds. And I thank you, Father, that you're going to give them grace to set things in order. Oh! Ishan, la la mose, ke wo ko shan, na ya la la mose. Oh! Rabaka shataya, iya la la mose. You're so tired. You're so tired. You're so tired. My God. You're so tired of feeling the way you feel and struggling the way you struggle and dealing with the things you've been dealing with. Oh! But the Spirit of God is here right now. Oh! Rabaka shan, la la mose, ke in the name of Jesus, Satan, I break your assignment over her life right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Rabbi, say, 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. In the love of Shah, in the Yash, say, Oh, Rabbi, say, Yes. Yes.
but I went to him for his benefit. I enjoy the sitting of my father, but I went to him for his benefit because God healed something in that moment. And I don't know, and I'm just using that as an example, I don't know what it is or who it is, but God wants to heal the relationship. God wants to heal the broken pieces and the parts of you that feel like doing the work by your spirit for your glory in the name of Jesus we thank you Father that you're doing the work in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus glory to name glory to change and fix and reorganize and try to pull it back. And all of the stuff that's so important to you that you just like, I'm guarding this and I'm not, just let it go. Because you can't keep going the way you've been going. Because the weight is too much. I don't know if you look, I, I see you looking back at regrets. I see you looking back at things and looking at certain situations currently and you're like, if I had maybe if I'd have done it, maybe, maybe. All of these uncertainties Maybe if I had, this would have been different. Listen, you can't do anything about it. God is getting ready to unscramble some stuff for you. Because he's yes. able. He's able. He said, it's not for you to carry it around and try to fix everybody and everything. It's for you. Let him do the work. That's, that's, that's how we're supposed to do it. Is let him do the work. Father, right now I come into agreement with my sister right now, Lord, that you're going to know the city that I shut That you're going to give her the grace to just put it all in your hand. Peace. Peace. That's the thing you cry out most for. Peace. God, I just want peace in my mind. Peace in my emotions. Peace. Father, I thank you for that peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Oh, Ramase Kebu Koshan. Alalabosi. Enadalaboko Ramase Kebu Koshan. Alalabosi. Enadalabosi. Enadalabosi. Oh, Ramase. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Years, for years, I've watched you when you praise God, when you begin to dance. You're fighting. You're fighting. You're fighting. You're trying to get victory over something. You're fighting. And I've watched you dance and I've watched you throw your hands and I've seen you get angry and I've seen you pound the floor and I've seen you fighting for your life. Oh, fighting for peace, fighting for your joy, fighting to keep your prayer, fighting not to fall in the ditch, fighting, fighting, oh, 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 but I hear the Lord saying, you don't have to fight anymore. He's fighting the battle for you. He's giving you peace right now in the name of Jesus. Peace.
I'm mean, glad you came to church today. I'm glad I came. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in the presence of God. I said it's good to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah.